let's uh, let's kick off with the next presentation. I hope everyone, all of you, are back and ready for some exciting uh, stuff around pipeline integration with with cloud services from James Mosquez, working for Triple Crown Resources. So, James, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, guys, th uh, thank you for uh, letting me present today. Uh, again, my name's James. Uh, I'm the data science manager for Triple Crown Resources. Uh, we're based out of Dallas, um, uh, but I get to actually work from home. I've been working from home prior to the pandemic, so I really enjoy working from home. It's nice. Um, so I can't progress my slides. There we go. So um, Triple Crown, uh, uh, we are basically in uh, Permian Basin. Um, but when I came in on board with Triple Crown, uh, the problem with what we what I saw was everyone was using Access or Excel and so many different numbers uh, that were being presented uh, for meetings and uh, and for our leadership team. And so as the first thing I, I came in, or even before. I, I, I took a position with them I, and I told them I saw what they were doing. I was like, I told them, guys, this is not the way that we should be doing things. And they kind of gave me a free room of uh, how I think things should should work. Um, so, and I'm sure many of you guys have been in meetings where, where you've done integration type works and you've probably seen something very similar to what I'm showing on the uh, on the right part of my screen here. Um, so I'll quickly go through it and, and kind of give you guys a little, uh, little understanding of how the how our company works. Um, so we use a cloud database called Snowflake. Um, after a couple different uh, um, uh, researching into what we wanted to use, how we wanted to use it, uh, we found that AWS and uh, Azure um, uh, they were a little too um, uh, they had too many, too many things for us to for us offering. Uh, so we really, truly only wanted a database solution uh, because uh, within about six months of my coming on, on board with Triple Crown, we were using a SQL Server, uh, on-premise SQL Server, and we outgrew that SQL Server very, very quickly. Um, so we decided to move to the cloud pretty, uh, uh, pretty quick in, our, um, uh, in, in, my, uh, in my tenure there. So what we did was we used Snowflake, and one of the reasons we used Snowflake was the SQL, if you're used to writing SQL on SQL Server, um, uh, it's, it's, very, it's very, very similar, not many changes um, in it. Uh, so that was one of the things that we liked about it. I didn't have to get up to speed with any new uh, type of uh, syntax, uh, straight right into Snow, Snowflake, and, and there we go. And we were able to build um, uh, our database within a, a, you know, I think a few minutes and start testing it out. And it's, it's been great since then. Um, uh, we have backups. So our IT guy, he is, he, he is very happy with me. He doesn't have to actually maintain any servers or anything like that. Snowflake does all that for us. It's, it's, it's really, really a great product. So one of the things that we do with it is we start moving all of our data up into the cloud. So, um, um, we have these different apps. I think most of y'all might be familiar with some of these. Um, Patrell, Harmony, um, Ares, our, our accounting database, Oxus, uh, Peloton Suite, so ProdView, WellView data, um, and our iRob data, which if you guys don't know what iRob is, I guess it's very similar to um, Pi Historian. So this is our, um, our, our very, very granular data set. It is, um, I think it's like every, um, every um, uh, uh, 10 seconds or so. And we're able to upload all this stuff into Snowflake um, using um, things like Python or C Sharp. Um, and then from Snowflake, what we do is we use uh, Tipco uh, Spotbar to visualize the data. We even have automated reports out of Snowflake um, through our Outlook, uh, which is great. The team really, really enjoys those um, so that they don't have to get into uh, Spotbar for uh, just a quick daily look at stuff. Um, and then we even put some dashboards up on SharePoint. So if you don't if you don't feel the need to open up Spotfire, just want to get um, some uh, very uh, clean, uh, high level reports, you can go into uh, SharePoint, um, our SharePoint site, and the graphs are built there for you. Um, and then uh, a really nice thing is um, working working in the industry for a while. There's there's a couple of constants 
emails in Excel. Um, as much as I don't like Excel, Excel is never going to go away, I don't think. Uh, but I do make it available to pull things into Excel through some uh, customized um, um, add-ins that we have um, um, for, for our data. Uh, so uh, moving on, um, so a couple things I'm going to talk about are our database health checks and coordinate transformations, all using um, Python. And then I'll, I'll get into a, a, a quick machine learning uh, feature importance thing that, uh, that I just added uh, late last night. So one of the things with the database and all the different um, things that we're migrating to our database, um, um, in the past, it's always been hard for someone to say, well, I don't trust that database because um, it's not updated, it's we're missing something, things like that. And, and I totally get that. I've been there. I've had those struggles as well. One of the things that Python really, really is great at is um, um, is uh, making some things available to just show what you want to show and don't show what you don't want to show. So what I have are, and these are daily, these just get sent to me daily. Um, no one on our team really wants to know. Um, <laughs> uh, they just want to know the data is good. And, and so I get this early in the morning and I make sure I scroll down, make sure everything looks good. Then I'm off on my day doing whatever I'm doing. Um, so I've created uh, Python reports. Um, uh, to show me when I need a when there's a certain um, ID that doesn't have an associated UWI uh, uh, for our joins, um, so I'll, I'll look through those. So we have I have different tables set up for for that type of stuff, um, and, and just on the um, on the off case that we have rep reporting duplicate days, um, there's there's a I have a table that says hey there's a this well and and it's uh, reporting uh, twice on this day. It never really happens on this case. Uh, uh, sometimes it happens if it, if it's um, if there's a duplicate entry in in um, in one of our join tables, um, and so I just keep that in there just to make sure everything's on the up and up. And then um, one of the other really good things I do here is I match what we have in our integrated cloud database against what's in our prod view database and. Uh, the third table uh, from the top. If anything, if anything is um, is off, it'll show me there. And then um, uh, the next table shows me uh, things I can query off dates to say, hey, um, uh, this data wasn't updated. Um, take a look at it. Um, and so I have that for I don't know uh, ten or twelve different tables that we use, um, and it only shows me the things I need to look at. Um, again, for our counts, our table counts, uh, some of them I can't key off date, so I use a, uh, a total count versus the source versus our cloud database. Um, and so what you're seeing here are two different reports uh, sent uh, two different times here uh, where you can see uh, where I'm, I need to go look at stuff if I, if I actually have to go look at things. Um, so this has been really, really helpful for, for myself to um, make sure our database and everything's working there. Okay, so that's that's the that's the end result. But how do I actually get there? Um, and um, I've taken out a few different things and just kind of keyed off of uh, um, off of some some basic um, um, basic information through the um, um, uh, through our scripts here. Uh, so you can see I don't actually use a whole lot of uh, modules. I use our Snowflake connector, uh, a Win32. Uh, that's for your email, and then pandas. Um, um, I love pandas. Uh, uh, my machine learning uh, teacher made us take a class, and he's like, "You can't use pandas," and and it was so tough. But uh, but uh, uh, since I'm not in class, I use pandas all the time. Uh, to connect to our database, it's very simple, um, and this is uh, uh, same kind of code that you can use for uh, for just about any type of uh, SQL database out there. Um, you know, our connector here, username, password, account, and then our warehouses and our database and our schema. Um, and then once you connect to that, it's very simple just to run um, SQL, uh, SQL code through Python. Um, so I have this view called VQC Analysis Wells 2, and it does a whole lot of different things in there. And then from there, I just say, um, show me all the results, and, but don't show me drill schedule, field direct, and when uh, some character IDs equal uh, equal these things here, um, so I run this query, and then I uh, and then I convert that query to a data frame here. Uh, 
and and then from that point on, there's a bunch of other different queries in there in my in my uh, in my script that I'm not showing. Uh, you can see here we started at line 39, and by the time I'm done with it all, I'm around line 388. So I have so many different uh, so many different uh, uh, things I look for, uh, um, looking up for my wells, duplicated dates, rate comparison, budget categories, landing zones, uh, header merges um date checks um and a couple other different things um and so i i use all this stuff in here and then i write the i write the body i write all this stuff to the body of the email and then i just send it to myself um which is great um and this whole thing takes our script maybe it takes probably maybe 15 20 seconds to run and it and it queries a lot a lot of different tables and it does a lot of uh, a lot of complex uh, joins and calculations in there uh, which is great um, so this is my first way before I start any actual ml type stuff I, I make sure everything looks good on my data side uh, the next thing I like to talk about is our coordinate transformation for myself I am not an Esri um, Arc GIS person. I, um, I I know what I know, and I know very little. Um, but I'm much better at Python than I am with Arc GIS. And so this is my way to convert uh, coordinates from um, uh, X, Y, or lat long into the desired um, coordinate system that we want. So um, uh, one of our users uses this for uh, field development when he's just uh, doing some uh, proposals um, and he needs uh, quick locations uh, so he'll he'll uh, have this thing set up so that he can just put his X and Y and his description put an email where he wants it to be sent and then he just runs the small little Python program and then when it converts it sends him all the all his original data and then his conversion tells him when he converted it and gives some assumptions on the uh, on the data he has uh, so it works really, really well, um, and that's one aspect in which I'm using uh, Python for uh, coordinate conversions. The other way I'm doing it is uh, we have two different sources of data. We have our surveyor, which is uh, our surveyor will have our surface hole locations, um, our uh, point of penetrations, first take and last take points, um, and a bottom hole location. And so. He, we've worked with him over uh, over a few weeks, and we've developed a workflow for him to send by email um, uh, the data, and we use Python to uh, scrape the data, to um, transform the data, and send it to our database, our Snow da Snowflake database called Dive. And then our Phoenix guys, who um, who have our surveys, we do the same thing, um, but instead of Python, we're using C Sharp. Um, and we use Out, Outlook again. So they send the emails into Dive. And what's really nice is all this data gets completely automated into our database. I don't have to do anything. Our end users don't have to do anything. What they, uh, all we get is an email saying, hey, um, your surveyor um, or your well trajectory has been um, submitted to Dive. And that's great. I, I love it. Um, and, um, and then from that point, um, just uh, um, at the end of December, what I've uh, what I've automated now is taking the those well trajectories and use and using Python to create shape files for for our team. So now I automatically create um, our internal um, shape files for our well paths, and then our everyone else's uh, shape files from uh, uh, from our uh, from our sync of the IHS data that we get. Um, now, I know some of you are like, oh, wait a minute, we don't like to use shape files. I totally understand. Uh, but there is an option to do to go directly into a geo database. Um, and again, I don't do that because I'm not an ARC person and I don't want to maintain a geo database uh, for myself. Um, and so for us, um, the Esri um, uh, shape file works pretty, pretty well for us. So that's that's part of it but how do i actually get there um again uh very very it's not too hard um and and to be completely honest guys i didn't create this all by myself um stack overflow um and google uh, big help um um so what we do here is um we import pandas uh pyproj and then our email client here um 
I tell it where the file's at, and and um, and from that point is I get some I get some uh, I I get the email from uh, from the uh, from the spreadsheet. I remove some um, remove some rows, remove any empty rows, and then rename my columns what I need them to be. And then this is where all the real magic happens: is your your project out. Uh, what do you want it to be in your project in what what you assume the coordinates are um, and then from this point is I'm going to um, come I'm going to create my latitude and longitude columns and I'm going to use my x and y points so it does the transformation for you uh, which is really great um, it does it does it pretty quickly for us um, and then I create a new data frame, or I overwrite the data frame with the new lat long, and then I add my date converted uh, again um, with my Outlook. Um, I add what I'm what I'm going to do here, and um, send the body, and it'll send the email to whoever was on that was on that spreadsheet. Uh, this works really really well for us, um, and then the um, the well trajectory um, ones that I spoke of before. Um, that is uh, that doesn't go from a from our own um, user input Excel file that comes directly from our integrated database, which uh, which we run uh, uh, nightly um, on our data. Um, super quick stuff. Um, OK, so getting into a little bit of uh, machine learning. Um, so I'll talk um, briefly about some of this here. Um, and so. Um, don't take don't take too much into the data here. Uh, it's kind of a play data set that I was working with. But one of the things that I do uh, before I create any type of model is I go and do what they call a, um, a feature selection um, or a feature importance. I want to know what features in my data are going to uh, give me my best results for my predictions. Um, so from this point, what I do is I do a uh, I do a, a feature selection um, thing to give me uh, the importance of all these, and I can so I can throw away um, some columns, and um, and um, and hopefully the code runs faster. But uh, how do I actually get to this point? And and everything that I've talked to um, prior up to this point is getting the data situated in a way that is uh, that you can repeat your analysis over and over if you have to, right? Um, and that's why I like using um, our, our, our database um, with Python as well. So what I do here is I create a view, I go to the table that I'm looking at, um, and I run, I run some quick um, um, uh, SQL to get, to get what I need. Um, and then the, it, I'm only showing a bit of my SQL here, but this one actually goes down um, I don't know how many lines of SQL it is, but it's it's quite a bit to get to where I want it to be. Um, and then when I finally run it into Python, um, uh, one of the, one of the things that constantly is doing is is uh, looking for missing values and things like that. Because uh, when you're running um, machine learning things, um, you want to you want to figure out how to deal with uh, missing values. Uh, so I have a nice little function that I use all the time. Uh, puts out a um, little table like this for myself, and th that I just keep reassessing my data as through every every step of my process here. Now I know there's probably some other packages to do to do this um, uh, instead of writing your own function, um, but I wrote this a long time ago, and um, I just keep using it. Um, so um, so after I've gone to my SQL here. What I've done is I've 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 gotten a bunch of different SQLs um, uh, to get to my final my final view that I want to look at. Um, I run some Python on some numeric values. I fill in my my missing values with uh, I'm using mean in this instance here, but you can use all uh, so many different other techniques as well. And then to do a feature selection, I'm doing a model based feature selection. Uh, so I'm using a decision tree method, and I'm just creating my labels, uh, my Y and X uh, for the model, uh, creating the model, then fitting the model, and just looking at some outputs. Um, and then um, there's another piece of the code that I take the outputs of this model that will give me this 
table in a nice uh, that puts this that puts this data in a nice little table for you to use. Um, and I'm more on tables than 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 graphs uh, for myself. Um, I'll, I'll use graphs when I have to explain um, to uh, to, uh, to my team. But for myself going through it, uh, I just look at the uh, tables here. It's it's usually um, uh, I can see data better in, in tables. Um, but at that point in time, so I think one of the questions uh, for any of the guys that are in machine learning and, and, and know a little bit about this, you're probably asking yourself, well, James, why don't you do uh, for your missing values for your categorical values? Uh, one of the things I didn't mention here is there's quite a few categorical um, uh, uh, data sets I have in here, such as zone um fluid type and a couple other different ones right and so you can do um uh in python you can use a uh, um uh, one hot encoding or you can use um get dummies um i think that's a uh, pandas um uh version of it um and and that's I, I think that i think those are great um i don't have any issues with those but one of the things that i i like to do is I like to take my I like to take my data and reflect back with it on in Spotfire. So when I'm working with my uh, with my team that is not as familiar with some of these calls as I am, I can quickly make those um, make those graphs in Spotfire and we can relate them to the actual categorical variable. Um, and it's a lot in it's a lot less um, code writing than having to do uh, write those uh, write that stuff in Python. You can just quickly um, uh, do drop uh, drop downs and things like that. Um, so so that's one of the biggest benefits that I've seen by taking um, as much of the uh, burden of the missing values and a lot of data prep uh, uh, from Python and do it in, in SQL is to allow uh, allow myself and my users to use something that we're all familiar with uh, versus going through a a, Python, uh, a Jupyter notebook and running through different things. Um, so that's been very, very helpful for uh, um, for our team and in, in, in what we're doing. Um, again, we uh, it's taken me uh, it's taken me about two years to integrate as much data as we've integrated um, from um, field data to our um, historian data to uh, chem, uh, geochemistry. Um, uh, uh, Patrol data, and is is we we have a full roundabout system that does so much different things, and and now I'm at the point where I feel confident in our data. I don't have to do a whole lot to maintain our uh, our, our our processes, other than just keep up with my daily email and and to look at at different things. Um, so now I can start spending more and more of my time on on machine learning. Which, if you guys have, have done a lot of this, um, the, the the machine learning, like he, here's the oops, this decision tree will block here. Uh, that's all that's needed to make this table here. Um, but everything that is involved to get to get to your um, your columns here is very very uh, time consuming, and that's where I spent most of my time. I, I this part of it took me um all of like two minutes to do whereas the sequel and investigating all the numbers and making sure everything looks right and and is on is on the up and up i think that took me a good day and a half uh worth of work to, to, to run through so machine learning um I, I like it um uh and at the same time um it's it's just a lot of um a lot of work on the on the front end to um verify your data and stuff like that but um uh, at least triple crown now we're at a point where the verification of data and trusting it um is is um is kind of at a at a level where we we all feel really really good with it and and we can spend more time and more of our efforts on things like um feature importance and start trying to uh um uh, fill in data for what we think we're uh what we want to do um i think with that guys i am done um i will look for any questions um on this um but uh i'm not quite sure with this web app here so if there are any questions uh, someone will have to read them to me if, if, if we see any at the moment i don't see any any james but feel free to ask questions and of course feel free to if it's okay by you james to contact you afterwards there could be someone interested in 
and maybe some one-to-one -one questions. <clears throat> uh, yeah, guys. If, yeah. yeah, guys. If, if you have any questions whatsoever about any of this, um, please feel free to contact me. Um, again, a lot of this is not proprietary information. Um, you know, everything that I showed today is just basic uh, Python and maybe some. Um, uh, my head banging and get to my desk for some of the um, Esri conversion type stuff. But um, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions that y'all have online or, or after as well. I think the very good thing here is is, is, is being able to show IDs and, and uh, these things start, we, we start thinking about showing when you show these things, James. So it's, it's very interesting to uh, to see how Triple Crown is 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 is, is attacking this, uh, both with respect to Python and, and machine learning. And so we're, yeah, we're very happy to have you here and presenting for us. So thank you very much. You're welcome, guys.